want to keep this from moving back and forth, left and right, and up and down. I'm going to tie off from front to back, and I'll start by going underneath this board here and then throwing it over the top. Now I'll take my hank and pass it underneath, and I'll adjust it so that I can tie into this side and pull down to get my tension. So my hank's gonna go towards the rear of the truck, and I wanna be able to capture that standing portion. So I'll pull it up, go underneath, and now I'm gonna tie a figure eight knot. I'll take the free end of my cord and pass it behind, over the front, and then down and through the loop I created. And this is similar to a Canadian jam knot. I wanna make sure this part of my rope is underneath the very bottom of the figure eight. Right now it's over the top of the free end, so I'm just gonna switch it up, there we go. And what happens now is when I pull down on this, it'll tighten the knot and it'll help secure any tension I pull in. To keep this secure, I'll pull in a couple half hitches. And now we'll move over to our next anchor point. To prevent the kayak from moving back and forth, I need to create a stopper along this board, so I'll add an additional anchor point by wrapping around. I'll just go over the top once, twice, three times, and then I'll go over the top of my rope towards me, and then down below again. Now once I take my cord and I run it back over the top of the kayak, I'll pull on this loop and it'll add tension around this board, keeping it from sliding around. Pass our hank underneath and back over the top. Now I'll take my hank and I'll run it inside my transition section here. And that way when I pull, it creates additional tension on both sides. We're almost done. We have two points tied down. The third point is gonna be the front of the kayak. I'm gonna use a simple loop. Let me show you how I tied that. I'll tie an overhand knot on one side. My other side, I'll thread through and tie another overhand knot. There we go, and pull it tight. Now this was shown to me by my neighbor. He used to build roller coasters and he would use this to sling the roller coaster tracks. Here's the last of our hank. And now along this line is where I'm gonna incorporate my loop. I'll do that by taking a bite, pass it from behind, and then I'll run this through. There we go. Now I'm just gonna release the rest of my hank. I'm gonna create another lark's foot and I'll run the free end through. There we go. Now I'll pull in some tension. I'll take my green loop, it'll go over the top. My red section is gonna go underneath. And I'll just need to adjust this so it's centered once I pull in my tension. Now the reason we loop into the rope like that as we pull tension on this system, this will clamp down on the red rope and it'll help prevent the front of the kayak from slipping back and forth within the loop. And now it's time to finish this off. I'll pass it underneath and we need to tie in and tension our line here. Let's tie in an alpine butterfly. I'll take my rope and I'll twist it to create a loop. I'm gonna twist it one more time and follow that same direction. And now I'll take this loop and I'll just pass it downwards, okay? I have these two ears up top. I'm gonna to fold it down on the right, fold it down on the left. And now in the middle, when I push the ears together, I have a little window there. I'm gonna take this section and pass it through that window. And this is a true alpine butterfly. I'm gonna show you some rope magic here. This used to be top secret, but now most of you know it. I'll go through my loop once, I'll go through it twice, and I just need to make sure I'm on the correct side of the loop so that the end that I'm tensioning is underneath the standing portion. And that's gonna create an automatic trucker's hitch. And what I mean by that is when I pull on my tension side, it slips underneath my standing part and it locks in the tension I pull in. I'll use my trusty Marlin spike to pull in the last of the tension. I'll go over the top, create a loop, hook into my standing portion, and then slip back through. And this creates a slick little handle that I can pull on without wearing out my hands. Make sure you finish it off with a couple half hitches. 
Now what to do with this dangling end? I could just go around this part, tie in an overhand knot and slide it forward. And that might work. I want it to be a little more secure. So I'm gonna still tie an overhand knot. I'm just gonna go around it twice. There we go. And then I'll tie my overhand knot. Here's what it looks like down below. You can see we have our two anchor points in the back, two in the middle. And then around the front, we have a bridle going over the top of our kayak. Here's that stopper we created earlier. When the kayak shifts back and forth, it actually shakes the truck bed instead of sliding around on that board. This is sufficient enough to tie up front. And then we're definitely not gonna be able to pull it out of the bed. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, you can pick up your very own Marlin Spike. It's my design and I carry it at my shop, austinforzell.com.